Thanks for tuning in to this final VBA video in a little series that I've been working on. We have looked previously at the interaction with objects. So we talked about shading a box or a shape and we also talked about shading cells using a couple of simple lines of VBA. We previously saw how you might be able to change the contents of a box by linking it to a cell and then make that box turn a certain color depending on a criteria. So in that previous example it was relating to whether the home or away team had the better of that particular stat. We can apply that same concept to a creation of a player infographic. So I've simply put in a few very simple stats as you can see here we've got seven measures, touches, successful passes and so on down to assists and the numbers for this particular athlete uh, are shown in column B there. If I select a different athlete those numbers are going to change based upon just a very small data set that I've got on the control panel sheet. So we can choose between five um, famous footballers and some just made up numbers are going to populate as if they'd just finished a match. The concept behind this one is that you can choose whereabouts on their photo this particular stat might appear. And I've got a little key down the bottom there. I've placed 12 boxes on this photo. They are invisible unless they've got some information in them. And so uh, as an example, at the moment, stat box one isn't visible. So I'm going to type its name into the name box. And a little border is going to appear to show us that it actually is there. It just doesn't have any contents linked to it. Here's where that happens down here. There is nothing in the table above that is linked to stat box one. So we could change that. We could change, for example, the one that's currently linked to stat box 5. We could change that to stat box 1. It now appears. We can run the code. And it's going to move from down there to up here. We could also say, I want light grey with black font. And it's going to run and change that. The previous example described how I linked those boxes, but just as a recap, you can insert any shape. Let's place it here. And by clicking in the formula bar, typing in equals, and then clicking on a cell that has some text in it, you then have a link between the contents of that cell and the contents of the shape. You can modify the size and the layout and all sorts of things such as the shape, uh, fill and border and so on. So I've simply placed those 12 boxes on there. I've linked the contents of those 12 boxes to these 12 cells. Not all of them have any text in them. Column B provides our logic true there is some contents in the box and that drives a decision in the VBA. False means that the font and the box background are transparent so they're there but you can't see them. And so on the VBA page we have some code there and I've commented it out so that you can see what's going on. Firstly the decisions made up in the top left corner around the box color and the font color, they feed through to the control panel page. Here's our selected font, and this is the RGB colors associated with that. And all it's doing is looking it up in the table above. I've just manually typed those font color RGB codes in. Similarly, the background color, I've given a few more options just five there. You could change them to anything you like and add more or less, but depending on what the user defines, this font color, the background color, 
and this final option which is transparency will be selected. Transparency doesn't have an RGB color, it has its own line of code which you can see here and in this one up here I've simply defined it as a variable which is why it says be trans. So at the top I have defined the variables based upon values in those cells on the control panel sheet. Here's the logic. The cells driving the contents of the boxes are in rows 15 to 26 so the, so the code loops through those 12 rows. It finds the ones that are true. If it's true it applies the color for the box and the font. If it's false then it simply leaves the RGB colors in place but makes them 100% transparent. So you can see there it says transparency equals 1. And then it goes to the next option. At the bottom there's a reset button that simply applies 100% transparency. The other part of the code which we also saw in a previous video is that if you select a player from this drop down box his picture and his club logo appears. Now I've made sure these are roughly the same physical dimensions so that the code can place them in the same spot. And there's one key thing about this particular code and that is that it needs to sit not in a module but on the worksheet. If I right click on the tab name called infographic and I click on view code we can see a little change event and how did I get that? Well I interacted with this drop down box at the top and the second drop down box over here and these are all the things that you can do to a worksheet you can uh, update things when it's activated you can cause it to calculate and so on and so on I use the change event quite regularly and what that means is that if a particular part of the worksheet changes then you need to run some code and I've specified that it's only if cell A4 changes then you run the code that first deletes the old picture and then adds the new picture. How does it do that? Depending on the player that's been selected that's the name of the photo in a folder on my computer there's the folder path above that's the name of the logo it's in the same folder and the folder and the file name combine to give a full file path that can be fed into the code so it tells where it is and the last part is the name of the file and the extension which is JPG. So on the infographic page you simply select the athlete, the change event fires, that change event runs those two pieces of code, deletes the old picture, adds the new picture and then I can go through and say well based upon where this picture of Ryan Giggs sits it would be sensible to change the one that's currently in box number seven and put it somewhere else. For example, we could put it on the right hand side because there's some empty space there. So we could either do five or four. Let's change what's currently number seven to four. So stat box seven becomes stat box four. I then run the code and it cleans things up doesn't look that great there, change it to number 5, run the code again and there we have it, it's a little bit more uh, suitably placed. So I haven't gone to a lot of care to make these boxes a nice looking colour. In some cases, particularly with this background, you might actually be able to get away with a clear background and white font. Let's see what it looks like might look okay but uh, still I'd probably keep some kind of box behind it but nevertheless the concept behind this is that you could apply simple VBA coloring box backgrounds coloring fonts to a concept such as making a infographic for each player after a match is finished 
and making modifications based upon whereabouts on the image your player is. If you want a copy of this file, feel free to drop me a line, happily send it through to you. And as far as learning a bit more about actually how to write VBA code, there are a couple of excellent resources available on YouTube. It's certainly not my speciality, but there are some great videos that you could watch, in particular from a channel called Wise Owl. There is a long series of introductory VBA videos where you can learn about this kind of thing from scratch.